In the previous episode I showed you how uh, to implement in Excel a linear programming model that we formulated before in, in the mathematical form, right? So if what, we've did, what we did is we have all the formulas of this model implemented in Excel, we have spaces for variables, we have the total profit calculation and we have the resource consumption calculations and we also have the right hand sides for the constraints. Now what is still left is we would like something, right, to find for us, to solve the problem, to find the value of x1 and the value of x2 that will maximize this formula, but at the same time uh, that will make sure that these three values, each of them does not exceed these three values respectively, okay, the respective value in this column, right? So we have to somehow specify it. Remember, when we do this, when we implement this model in Excel, for Excel this is just a formula that calculates a number. It has no meaning, right? We, we know this is the number of pumps, but for Excel this is just another formula. So it doesn't know where the profit is, where the objective is, and where the constraints are, and what the constraints should be limited to. And it doesn't know that these are variables. We want to change this and not these, for example, right? We don't want Excel to change these. These are parameters. We want Excel to change these. So how do we do this? Well, we use for this Excel Solver Add-in. And this uh, Add-in comes with uh, every installation of Excel. Um, uh, and uh, you normally it comes with every installation, but it is not enabled. So first thing I will show you is how to enable it. If you want to see it in Office 2010, which is the one I'm using, you normally go to Data um, uh, here and then it should appear here on the right hand side. It doesn't appear here, that means it is not enabled. A note here, sometimes Excel add-in, uh, uh, solver add-in appears for some reason in an additional tab called add-ins, right? In this case, this is not, uh, this is not going to be the case. It is going to appear here. So just look for it under data or under additional tab called add-ins, usually the last tab. So how do I enable it now? I'll go to file I click Options and I get Excel Options. Now here at the bottom on the left um, I have Add-ins. There's a long way to click. Then I go at to the bottom of this page and I have to select Go. And then I have a list of uh, Excel Add-ins. One of them is called Solver Add-in and that's exactly the one we want to select. So I will click on the checkbox select the checkbox and then I will click OK to enable this add-in. Before I continue, just one more comment. In case you get uh, some critical errors in using when you use Excel Solver, um, when you get some uh, errors uh, uh, that, you know, that the critical errors of uh, Microsoft Excel, something that the, the model cannot be solved, sometimes these can be solved, uh, sorted out by going again to where we enable this solver add-in, disabling it, clicking OK and going to it again and enabling it, clicking OK. Sometimes this eliminates some, some of the errors. In any case, if I see this in class, I will help you, but if you solve uh, problems at home and you get those critical errors of Excel Solver, then you mu it's a good idea to know about this. So now I just want to enable the solver add-in, so I just uh, click ch the checkbox, click OK, and look what happens here now on the right, in the right top corner, we see Solver appeared, right? Um, <coughs> so now we can we can start using it. So I click on the solver. I'll move it here to the right so you can still see the model. And look at what we have here. We have here certain um, uh, certain elements, certain uh, entry points, entry boxes uh, that the names of which you might recognize. The one, the first one is set objective. This one asks us what is the objective function? Where is it calculated, right? Now we can't write the function here. We don't write here 350x1 plus 300x2. We just select one cell in this case, which is here, to indicate the objective function value is calculated here. This 950, there's actually a formula, if you remember some product that computes total profit in dollars for the production, right? Then we have to select, do we want to maximize or minimize the value, or do we want to obtain a certain target value, 
of this objective function well in this case we, we normally have maximization or minimization in this case this is maximization again go back to mathematical model you'll see it's maximize okay how do we change the profit we change it by changing the values of variables so this is the next element by changing variable serves we will tell the solver listen you are able to change those two cells and I'm selecting now the variables right so I click on this box and I then select the cells in which I have variables right now be careful whatever you select here the solver will overwrite when it solves the problem so I have here one and two but these will be uh, deleted and something else will be in these cells after I solve the problem when I click this solve button later on okay so be careful don't select parameters don't select some product functions because your work will be deleted after you click solve and you will you will waste some time you'll have to recover them okay and that actually tells you if, if uh, for some reason when you solve a problem some of your formulas disappear uh, they are overwritten by numbers then probably you made a mistake when specifying variable cells okay so we've, you've, we've defined our variables we've defined where the objective is and that has to be maximized now we still need to define constraints and this is the last but the biggest component here we say here it says here subject to the constraints so it's exactly as in the mathematical modeling right? subject to and then there are the constraints the list of constraints so we have uh, five constraints here in total and we actually could be adding them one by one right so I can say add this is the menu for adding constraints notice you can add a constraint you can change an existing constraint or you can delete and you can also reset load and save when you click add there is a new mini window that for in which you can specify one of your constraints now I could just say number of used pumps which is here calculated here there is a sum product if you remember here less than or equal which is selected here notice you can select here equal or greater than or equal the three types of constraints we, we talked about ignore the others for the time being so I still keep less than or equal and then I can select the right hand side of the constraint so if I keep it like this right it, it I will tell solver listen whatever value appears here when you're changing these cells whatever value appears here it should not be greater than 200 this less than or equal this this is 200 right uh, don't be tempted by the way to put 200 here right again it, it use references for all those parameters so it is clear what the right hand side of the constraint is now uh, I, I could do this right I could click OK and then I this constraint will appear here however I want to show you a faster way because you see now I will have to add two more constraints of the same type labor hours used total less than or equal this number and this less than or equal than this right so how do I do this in a faster way let me delete this just to show you an, a better way I'll click add and instead of selecting just one constraint uh, I will select three constraints I will select three total values total used resources and I will then say less than or equal than these three right again look at this if I had 20 constraints 20 resource constraints I don't have to click it 20 times I just select once all the left hand sides formulas and then once I select all the right hand side so here we have the left hand sides on this part and then here we have the right hand sides in this part now you can only do this if you have the same sign in the constraint right if I had some constraints less than or equal and other constraints with other signs I have to divide them into blocks because in each block I have to have the same sign right so I can click OK now by the way if you click add add means the same as OK but you're immediately moving to adding a new constraint so this constraint has been added and it all immediately moved you it immediately moved to adding a second constraint if you don't want to uh, add the second constraint click cancel and you will see the first constraint that we added there is there right it looks a bit awkward because it just shows you the references but you can identify d5 d7 this is d and this is five six seven these are the three cells and then this is e5 e7 is here right these references so this is a correct constraint so we added already from our mathematical model the first three constraints and now what is left is still non-negativities 
right? x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. Now there is a way of adding them without selecting a constraint here. There is a checkbox here which says make unconstrained variables non-negative, right? It would be enough to just select this checkbox. Sometimes it is by default selected, right? And it would work this way. However, I would recommend you always add the constraints, even the non-negativities, uh, without selecting this checkbox, but as a regular constraint. So I'm going to click Add and then I'm going to say, well, what is x1, x2? It's here, right? These two cells, and I want them now greater than or equal to, I select, and then I will put here a constant 0. Now, constant 0 is the only one that we uh, exceptionally allow uh, as a, a constant embedded here in the solver. Don't put any other constraints, but if it is 0, there is no point in creating spaces for, for zeros here in, in, the, in the model. Okay, so now when I click OK, I have those two constraints. Notice that they are sorted automatically by the first reference, top down, left right, and uh, and the model has been entered. Now I'm almost ready to solve it, with one exception though. I still have to select a solving method. The default solving method is the generalized reduced gradient method, which is good for any optimization problems. Uh, uh, including non-linear problems. It also works for linear problems, however it is not the most efficient and therefore it's a good idea to select a method for, s for linear problems and you can see this is the second method here, it's called simplex LP and now we will be able to, to solve this problem. A comment here is that in this is how it looks in Office 2010. Uh, in, in earlier versions of Office and Excel uh, for example 2007 or earlier, um, you, will, um, you will see that there is no solving method but you, what you have to do is you have to go then to options of the solver and then click a checkbox which, sa which says assume linear model and that basically works in exactly the same way when you click this checkbox in options in an older version of, uh, of a solver uh, of, of Excel then you will get the same functionality you will, you will select a simplex LP model by the way simplex is, is the the uh, method for solving linear problems. It is very fast, it can solve very large problems uh, with many variables and many constraints. Uh, okay, so now that we've, uh, we've uh, entered the model, we told the solver this is the objective we want to maximize it, this is the changing variables, these are the constraints, use this solving method. We can now finally click solve and if everything that we've entered is correct, uh, we should get a solution, right? Um, so I click solve and then I get uh, a window here which uh, talks about results. Now you might be tempted to directly go and read what are the values of the variables that, that are optimal, right? That give the optimal solution. Um, however, I, I, I urge you not to look at them yet. I urge you to always first read the, the message here which in this case says solver found a solution all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied why is it why, why do i insist on this because if you uh, sometimes make a mistake and often initially especially you will be making mistakes sometimes a mistake may be displayed here there may be a message here which says for example your problem is infeasible or maybe your problem is unbounded okay uh, or there is another error constraints are not linear something might happen right and then there will still be some values here but they will make no sense because of this message because if the problem is infeasible then whatever is here cannot be a feasible solution right so first always read the message and if the message says all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied we have a solution then click OK and then look at the solution here right so, because the message said it is an optimal solution, we know we just determined the optimal solution, which is 122 aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes should be produced, and that should give us a profit of $66,000, $1,100. And as you can see, this is exactly the same solution as we had before uh, using the graphical method. And of course, that, that is expected. Both methods are correct methods. They should lead to the same solution.